how are you going? Now usually when I make a video, I start by trying to justify the absurd thing I'm doing. Mostly so it drags out and I get more money, but also so I feel a little bit more sane. But with this video, I really don't have a reason. Besides that you all kind of bullied me into making it. And you know, if you've also got an idea that will hurt me, join my Discord or Twitter and let me know. Like Barack Obama, who wants me to go skydiving after pepper spraying the instructor. All right, flamethrower. And I think I've got the perfect thing. This broken outdoor heating lamp we've never used, which should have all the necessary components I need to make a good flamethrower. Like this switch, this grill thing here, this igniter, a gas hose, and this American soldier who loves burning Vietnamese children. Hello. Uh, I'm gonna move this lamp so it might get cold, but uh, you can come with me if you want. Yeah, I'll just grab the chair. <laughs> So today, I'm going to bung together a flamethrower that will hopefully warm the hearts of even my most American viewers. And the first thing I should do is probably take it apart to see what things I have to work with. And then I should be able to roughly place the parts together in a way that looks like a flamethrower. And I'm really hoping I won't have to buy anything and can use things already available in my garage as I went a little over my prawn budget in the last video. So I'm liking what I've got so far. We've got screws that go both in and out, some useful spider webs, a nozzle, and this thing, which I don't really know what it is, but it makes a rather nice noise. Ah, it says dump switch. So that explains what I've been doing wrong all these years. And I don't know why, but sometimes I get really impatient while taking things apart. Like instead of just undoing this screw, I decided to ignore it and just bend the metal to get the temperature probe out. And I kind of open my mail in a similar way. I think I might actually just be part rat. And speaking of animals, while taking the main body apart to get to these poles, something softly touched my hand. So I tried to find it in order to reciprocate the touching <laughs> and did not expect to find this big boy. And usually I attempt to catch them and release them outside, but this guy was probably the biggest huntsman I've ever seen and instead decided to let him permanently live in my garage. So this is it all taken apart and I think I've got a rough idea of what I want to do. So I'll have the gas bottle mounted on the top with the hose running inside the metal frame of the lamp. Then I'll add this accumulation tank, which will also double as a handle. Then I've got the valvey switch thing at the front, which will let the gas out through the nozzle. Now the smart ones amongst you will have noticed that I'm planning to use this little propane bottle instead of the big fella that came with the heat lamp. And that's because firstly, it's big, so I would need a strap to my back. And then if anything goes wrong and it blows up, I would probably be more dead than if I was using the little one. And also, if I use this little gas canister, it kind of looks like Elon Musk's flamethrower, but hopefully not quite as boring. So in order to use a small canister, I need to modify this hose to accept it. And luckily, I have this yogurt container filled with old gas fittings that I've collected over the years. What? What? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. That's not, that's not. Oh, come on, please. Just look at what it is before you eat it. Okay, so I think I can just cut off this old nozzle and tap a thread in and then put this hose on, which fits into the new gas nozzle. And just ignore the fact that this hose is now brand new looking and slightly longer. That happens sometimes when machining parts together. And this is basically the flamethrower done, except it doesn't look like one, but I still can't resist giving it an early test to see if I'm on the right track. Should not be on. Ah. And leaks everywhere, absolutely everywhere. I don't think there was a single connection point that didn't catch on fire, which is pretty bad, but also kind of impressive. Also, the flame was pathetically small and that might be the fault of the nozzle here, but I'm hoping that because a team of scientists designed this heat lamp that hopefully they created a nozzle that works and it's just the lack of gas flow that's creating a small flame. And using this pile of gas detecting powder I've collected over the years, we can see that there is heaps of gas escaping out of other places where it's not meant to be coming from. So I think I've got no choice but to use some Teflon tape. 
and my whole life I thought Teflon tape was kind of a scam. Just one of those add-on products that you don't really need. You know, similar to those shoe sticks, which you have in your cupboard because the shoe salesman somehow convinced you that in order to get the full shoe experience, you need to put them on using a slippery stick. And the guy is wearing a suit and has nice hair, so you trust him and you buy one. But then you realize it's a big lie. The shoes feel exactly the same. And now whenever you put them on, you look like a wanker while doing it. So please, no matter how lost you're feeling in life, do not buy a shoehorn. But with Teflon tape, that's not true at all. I'm a convert. Look, this is the brass fitting in the bath without the tape. And now with the tape. Can you see any bubbles? No, besides the bubble bath. It is pretty good bubble bath, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And this video isn't sponsored, but Mr. Teflon, the offer is there if you want it. I now literally use your tape on everything. All right, let's move on to building the body. So I have these two poles and I'm imagining that I can join them together and then also get this plate thing on the end, which kind of looks like the butt of a gun to rest against my shoulder. And I don't know how long I want it exactly. So I just closed my eyes and picked a random spot, then used a grinder to cut it down. And would you look at this? I think I found a use for this metal hat thing on top of the lamp. It fits perfectly on top of my bin and stops it from catching on fire. And it can also be used to protect my head as well. Are you all right? No, no, no. Are you all right? No, no, no. Wait, what is it now? Please. Wait, what is it now? Please. What is it now? Please. What is it now? Please. What is it now? Now that it's cut, I'm going to attempt welding it together and I don't have magnetic strips. So I'm just going to use some duct tape to hold it in place until I get some tack welds down. And I don't know how I do it, but every time I weld, I somehow get worse. It's a constant battle of getting the stick stuck, dropping it on the ground and being unable to pick it up and then melting through my workpiece. And this doesn't look like it's going to hold at all. So I just weld it over the seam three or four times and hopefully that should hold up. Okay, now that I have my slightly longer pole, I'm going to cut a hole in it here so the handle and accumulation tank pokes out. So I just drilled a little hole to check it was in the right place before attempting to use this cheap coring bit to make the right shape. And I'm willing to bet all of you a fiver that this drill bit doesn't work. See, I told you. Now, each of you owe me $5 plus the dollar I gave you for the bus. So I expect uh, at $6.96 million in my bank account by next Thursday. And speaking of money, I've decided I'm going to try using Patreon more instead of doing crappy sponsorships. So if you sign up now, you'll get early access to my videos, behind the scenes footage, and maybe if I can convince them, even a little sneaky foot photo. You see, one of them is a little shy, but the other one is super keen. Okay, back to drilling. So then I used the correct drill bit and made the hole and then screwed it together. And this thing is starting to look pretty good. Kind of like the flamethrowers you see in video games, except my cord is too long and I can't cut it. So I'm just gonna have to try and fold it inside the tube and then have it come out of this grill section. So I just used my same trusty drill bit to make another hole. And now I might just be able to stuff all of it into the casing. And while I'm doing that, I wanted to quickly explain why I bothered putting in this accumulation tank. So if I didn't have this little tank right here and just connected the bottle straight to the nozzle, the gas that is able to come out of the nozzle would be very limited as there isn't much space for the gas to build up beforehand inside the hose. But if I put a tank here, it fills up with gas. So then when the valve opens, there is a large amount of gas eager to get out. 
And I think a good way to understand it is to think of the hose without the accumulation tank as a single file line at the shops where everyone comes in slowly one by one compared to a Black Friday stampede where everyone runs in at once, falling over and crushing each other. The second one is a lot more fun with a lot more energy and exactly what I want coming out of the end of my nozzle. Okay, so I've got it all together except this nozzle and I don't really like this doily looking thing on the front, so I'm gonna cut it off. And that looks much more like a familiar flamethrower nozzle. And I've just realized that I can also utilize this metal rod underneath to hold the igniter flame. And some of you may be disappointed that I'm not using the original spark igniter, but firstly, it would be very hard to time the spark with the burst of propane. And secondly, I kind of broke it. So instead, I'm just gonna bend the metal rod to shape and then have a John Wick in front of the nozzle for a constant flame. Okay, just a couple of things left to do before I can burn myself. I'm gonna cut off the rest of this metal thing so I can securely attach the metal nozzle. And then I need some way to secure the gas canister up here. And I think I know the perfect free thing I can use the water holder from my bike, which I never really use as I'm always embarrassed to put my supermarket brand bottle in as all the other bikers have their designer bottles and camelbacks and they'll make fun of me. So instead, I just usually drink all the water I'm going to need for my ride in advance. In that way, I don't have to carry it. And this bottle holder does also have this toolkit, which is kind of useful, but I found you can just consume those beforehand as well. Okay, so I attached that and it's looking pretty good. Does my profile picture also agree? Do you think so? And I think we are ready for a proper test. And besides what all of you usually say on my videos, this time I'm remembering to follow safety procedures, like keeping a fire extinguisher on hand and removing any flammable objects from the area, like my clothes. And test time. that is not where fire is meant to be coming from. So I think I've got a couple of leaks or it could be an inbuilt safety restrictor in the valve. So I'm gonna try open it up and take it out. And I hate safety features like in Nerf guns where they put a single piece of plastic in to stop you shooting at a fun speed or seat belts that stop you rolling around in your car. And I find I'm happier when I remove as many of these as I can from my life. So I opened up the valve and I think I found the culprit, which is this little O-ring that is meant to sit on the end of this spring and stop the gas coming through, but it keeps popping off. So I just super glued it back on and then put a big bolt in the end to plug the hole. And now hopefully I should not hear the noise of any gas escaping. Like and subscribe. <laughs> And I was thinking of giving the flamethrower a paint job, but after trying out what the colors look like on my computer, I don't think I like the painted look very much. Okay, flame test round two. Now that is what I want. And I am still getting pretty big gas leaks, but they add a little bit of excitement to using it. And I'm quite happy with it. This probably beats the knife throwing book trap as the most irresponsible thing I've ever made. So let's go test it outside. We are in the midst of a bushfire crisis tonight, the likes of which this state has never seen. Police say they're searching for a suspected arsonist after they were alerted to some abnormal fire activity. Fire crews saw a new outbreak of flames and a person nearby. If people are going to do this sort of stupid, stupid things, look, there's no place in this world for them. These residents here are absolutely furious that this could possibly be the work of an arsonist and this very much remains a crime scene here tonight as police investigate exactly how this bushfire was started. Okay, maybe maybe it's best if I um if I test it indoors. So I've got various items to test the flamethrower on to see if it can do everything a good flame is meant to do. So let's start with some sparklers. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, now let's test something a little more Australian. And you know, some people try to blame the current government for the impending extinction of Australia's koalas, but no, I think it's actually because they are so flammable. And let's do the last test, a steel beam. And I don't think the flame is hot enough. And after all these tests, I realized I've made this thing horribly. I kind of wanted to make it easy for myself by not having to change the actual lamp much. So I left the trigger on the side here, but it's really uncomfortable to hold. And also I get burnt when the gas escapes. Also, the handle accumulation tank plan is horrible as it fills up with liquid propane and freezes, making it impossible to hold. The whole thing is also way too long and I don't know how I thought I was actually gonna use it in this position. And just to be safe, I think I need to make this clear. Even though I've called this a flamethrower in the title, it's not actually. The definition of a flamethrower is a device that shoots a stream of flammable liquid. Mine does not do this at all. Think of mine as just kind of a slightly larger cigarette lighter. And even though it looks cool and is hundreds of times bigger than the flame that originally came out of this canister and better than Elon Musk's, if you compare it to any other flamethrower on YouTube, it's pretty pathetic. And it would actually be more effective to just get a water pistol, put petrol in it, and then put a candle on the front. But I'm not allowed to do that as it's illegal. And actually, I'm not sure if what I'm doing right now is illegal either. So if I don't upload for a long time, it's not because my upload schedule is crap and I'm procrastinating, it's because I've been tagged by the police. Or you know what? If there are some cops watching right now, could you at least like this video and subscribe before coming to arrest me? Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and check out some of the other dumb things I've made.